Hi boys and girls, I hope you're doing well. This week for Sunday School, we have a special blessing. Uh, Mr. Everett has come in and he's going to teach a Sunday School lesson to us this week. And I'm looking forward to what he has to share with us from God's Word. He's going to be teaching us about the armor of God, specifically looking at the sword of the Spirit. And we're going to learn what the sword of the Spirit is. We're going to learn how it ought to have a part in our lives and how we ought to be using it and how God wants to use it. So I want you to listen very closely, and let's ask ourselves the question, what is the sword of the Spirit, and what difference does it make for my life? I'm looking forward to what we can learn and how God can use it today. Good morning, class. Uh, it's good to be with you this morning, and I hope you're doing well. Uh, me and Miss Kristen, we miss being with you uh, guys, and uh, we look forward to the day where we can uh, meet together again. And let's remember to pray for one another. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, congratulate the uh, Long family for the birth of uh, baby Titus. I know everyone there is excited, and we will continue to pray for you guys. And uh, also, we'll be praying for the rest of you as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, uh, Lord, for this day. I pray, Lord, for each and every one of the uh, class uh, members, Lord, I ask for you to protect their homes. Uh, Lord, I think of uh, the verse in Psalms 91 that says, uh, Let no uh, plague come near our dwelling. And Lord, I ask for you, Lord, to, uh, to just uh, to watch over us and to protect us, Lord, and to bring us back together again. Uh, very soon, we pray. And we do thank you for... Uh, the birth of uh, baby Titus, Lord, we ask for you to be with him and be with Miss uh, Miss Long in this time and, and all the family, we pray. And also for the others in our class, be with them as well and protect them. And now, Lord, speak to us from your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, so if you would, take your Bibles. I hope you have your Bibles. If not, go get them now. Let's do a review. It's been a few weeks since we met together. And if you remember in our last lesson that we were to, in everything that we do, we are to what? Glorify God. Do you remember that? 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, Therefore, whether we eat or drink or whatsoever we do, do all to what? The glory of God. And remember, that is our number one what aim in life as a believer, to bring glory to God. That was our first lesson in this quarter. The second lesson, we were learning about the what? The armor of God. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of who? His might. In verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the what? The wiles of the devil. And the title of our lesson today is to what? Draw your sword. Okay? What is the sword? Well, let's look at verse 17. What does it say? It's our memory verse for the week. It says this, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the what? The Spirit, which is the what? The Word of God. The sword is the Bible. It is the Word of God. Well, why did God give us the Bible? He gave us the Bible for uh, a number of reasons, but today he, gives, he gave us the Bible that we might know and live by the truth, all right? He wants us to spend time in His Word. He wants us to read it. He wants us to uh, think about it. And He wants us to apply God's Word in our lives. The Holy Spirit inspired God's Word. Okay, Paul and other Bible writers, they recorded what the Spirit told them to write. 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. Turn over there with me if you would. Knowing this verse that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the what? The will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were what? They were moved by the Holy Ghost. So none of the Bible writers, they added to the Scripture, God's Word, or subtracted from it. 
That's what this verse is telling us. But the Holy Spirit moved them to write down God's Word. They all wrote exactly what God wanted them to write. So, I want you to think about this. I ask you this question. How should we respond to the fact that the Holy Spirit inspired the Bible? Well, we should highly value it, right? Uh, we should study it. And then thirdly, shouldn't we base our lives on it and on its truth? The Bible is called the sword of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit uses it as a sword to do what? To fight back against Satan's lies about who? Us. About God and about the world. Okay? The Spirit exposes Satan's attractive lies as destructive. Satan tells what? He tells wily, tricky lies to us, doesn't he? Remember the wiles of the devil, those schemes? He makes sin look harmless. He makes it look even beneficial. And, and he sugarcoats things. His lies, they're like sugar-coated poison. And they seem good on the outside, don't they? But they are deadly on the inside. For example, Satan, he might say that stealing money from your mom's purse it will satisfy your desire for more. Uh, that making fun of a fellow, maybe student in school, will make you happy and popular. And that expressing your anger as you maybe blow up towards your mother, your father, or your siblings, you'll get that off your chest. And then expressing that anger as you blow up on them, it'll make you feel better. Have you ever had times like that in your life? I just get it off my chest. Those are some of the lies that we're talking about here. Well, the Spirit uses the Bible to shatter those lies that Satan likes to use to expose. Okay, and it exposes uh, those lies that are destructive. Okay? So, let's turn in our Bibles back to Ephesians chapter 4. Let's look at verse 28. All right, look at that with me. It says this. It says, Let him that stole what? Steal no more, but rather let him labor. Okay, look at that truth with me. Okay? Now, what Bible truths contradict the lie that stealing will satisfy your desire for more? Well, first of all, we see here that stealing is what? It's sin. Working, though, to have money to what? To give to those in need will please and glorify God, right? Isn't that our number one aim? To glorify God in all that we do, whether what we eat or sleep. Whatsoever we do, we are to glorify God. Let's look at verse 29, Ephesians chapter 4. And what does it say? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is what? Is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Well, let's look again. What biblical truths contradict the lie that making fun of a fellow student will make you happy and popular? Well, making fun of others is sin, isn't it? See that example here in the verse? Shouldn't we be edifying one another, encouraging one another, building each other up, right? Making fun of others is sin, okay? Uh, God blesses those who use their words to build people up in His truth. All right, moving on. Let's go to 31, verse 31 and verse 32 in chapter 4. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be what? Put away from you with all malice. Look at verse 32. And be kind one to another. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath done what? Forgiven you. Aren't you glad for God's forgiveness? Aren't you thankful for God's word that teaches us these truths, that expresses God's truth to us, that we can know how to live in this world? Look at the, the, the biblical truth here that contradicts the lie that blowing up at your parents will make you feel better. 
Anger used to attack others is what? It's sinful. And God did what? He forgave us our sins. And He wants us to seek to restore our relationship with others in the same way. Right? We've been forgiven. And therefore, we should forgive others. Well, these passages that we find here in Ephesians chapter 4, they are doing what? They're exposing Satan's lies. And then they are what? They're expressing God's truth. In learning these passages, they will give uh, gives the Holy Spirit swords to use in our lives to keep us from accepting Satan's destructive lies. So thank God for His Word. All right, live by it, study it, value it, and and live it. Live out its truths. Let's learn how the Spirit sword promotes health. Uh, how do we deal with our sin? Okay, God again uses the sword of the Spirit, except He, this time, He turns it towards us like a scalpel. Okay? And He cuts into our lives, and He exposes our sin, and then He applies His truth, God's truth, the Word of God, and He brings restoration. For the Word of God is what? It's quick. It's powerful and sharper than what? Any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Wow. The Word of God is living. That's what the word quick means here. Powerful. And the Holy Spirit gives the Bible life. And what does that do? It affects our lives, doesn't it? powerful. So, this question I ask you, when, if ever, has the Bible seemed to come alive to you as you read it? Can you think of times in your life? Perhaps you were struck by a truth from God's Word, um, touched by God's love for you, for God so loved the world. That's you. That's me. Or maybe you were convicted of sin in your life as you read God's Word. See how it's quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword? Uh, it's sharp like this sword here from this Roman soldier, this double-edged sword. This sword was so sharp, <laughs> it allowed the, the Roman soldier as he thrust it towards his enemy to slice Okay, at his enemy, and uh, and to cut. So what's the point, Mr. Jason? What are you trying to tell me about the Bible? Well, the Bible is sharper than this Roman two-edged sword. And it cuts down, like verse 12 says. It cuts down to what? The core of our being to uncover what we are really like. What's the core of our being here in this verse? It's the soul and spirit, right? Including our thinking, what our attitudes, our, our motives, motivations. That's the thoughts and intents. God uses, what, the sword of the spirit like that, what, that scalpel. Remember, that he turns towards us and it exposes sin in our lives. It's like a surgeon's scalpel that exposes that disease in someone's life. And it cuts away. That's what God's Word does. Let's look at verse 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Well, God sees us exactly as what? As we are. Okay? He knows our physical bodies down to the smallest part of the cell. And he knows our immaterial being perfectly. Nothing about us is hidden from God, is it? Nothing. So, how does that make you feel, knowing that God, <laughs> he, he knows you perfectly, better than you know yourself? Uh, does it make you glad? Or does it make you nervous? Well, something to think about, isn't it? Because God can see us as who we are. 
He can direct the Spirit to apply the Word of God to our lives with surgeon what precision. And perhaps the Spirit, He needs to heal our broken heart. You know, life can be hard. Um, especially when maybe, for instance, we lose a loved one, someone close to us. And we need God's Word to bring comfort to our lives in times like these. And the Spirit applies God's Word. He strengthens our hearts. He encourages us to continue to trust in the Lord. And sometimes the Spirit applies God's truth to our lives to remove a sin that has taken hold like a cancerous growth. And the Spirit presents us with God's truth and convicts us of sin. What should our response be? It should be to humbly confess the sin. Okay? And to feed our mind with God's Word. And to exercise faith in God. To continue to say no to sin and what? Yes to God. So the Spirit also uses God's Word to encourage us to get busy serving Him. You know, God created us, didn't He? To do God's works. I'm sorry, to do good works and glorify His name. Remember, everything we do, we should do to what? Glorify God. And the Spirit even gave us spiritual gifts to help us serve God. You've been given a spiritual gift. I know most of you have testify to, to accepting Christ as your Savior. Well, guess what? If you've done that, you have a spiritual gift. Okay? God can use you. With that being said, the Spirit will certainly use God's Word as He takes that sword and He pokes at you to get you involved in God's work here on earth. The Holy Spirit, He'll never misdiagnose your problem or misapply a solution. He's like a perfect doctor, isn't he? With perfect medicine and he helps us to become all God planned us to be. Isn't that wonderful? I hope you'll take these truths that we've learned from God's Word. Remember, everything you do, do it to glorify God. Secondly, arm yourself, okay? Uh, and be strong in the Lord. Remember Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Uh, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And then in verse 17 of the same chapter, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the, the Word of God. I hope you'll find uh, some encouragement from this lesson. And uh, me and Miss Kristen look forward to seeing you again, hopefully soon. And remember to pray for each other. Um, uh, pray for your families. Pray for your church family as well. That we'll be able to get back to God's house to where we can come together and we can encourage one another. Thank you, Mr. Everett, for that great lesson. That was challenging for all of us to remember how important God's Word is. Are we spending time reading God's Word? Are we letting God use it like a sword to pierce into our hearts and to make a difference? Let's all pray today that God will help us to use that sword of the Spirit with the rest of that armor so we can please God and so His Word can make the difference in our lives that He wants it to make. I'll see you again next week. Have a great week. I'm praying for you.